One guess what's coming up in this ep episode. Hi and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and part number six of the Tamiya 148 scale F51D project. As you can see by the supplies here, it is time to start with the decals. So what I'm going to do first is the stencil decals <coughs> and all of the other common decals between the two marking options. And the stuff I'm going to be using is uh, Microset and Microsol for setting solutions. So I think what I'm going to do, yeah, um, let's see here. So first <clears throat> I'm going to start on the left hand side of the aircraft first. I'll start at the front and just work my way back. Now I'm not going to show you every one of my decals, but I'll show you a few of the small ones and then when it gets to the larger decals I'll uh, demonstrate those as well so for the first one we have number one which oddly enough hits the first decal on the sheet and it's white and you can barely see it so I'll just show you how I do this so using my <clears throat> nice sharp knife with a fresh blade, I'll cut number one out like this. Then <coughs> use my tweezers, hold it in the water for a few seconds, and I just use room temperature water. Um, it's often recommended that you use you know warm water but especially in the winter time I can warm up some water and after about three decals it's to room temperature and I don't like going back and forth for more hot water and one of these days I might get a one of those uh, mug warmers but I haven't yet and so far so good so then I take the decal set it on a paper towel to let the <clears throat> excess moisture wick off and I get a toothpick or a cocktail stick depending on where you're from in the world to help place the uh, <clears throat> the decal because less chance it'll cut or tear so then let's see if it is loose yet yep that's what I like about these decals is they pretty fairly quick uh, working time all right so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some micro set and put it where the decal is going to go then take the decal on the backing sheet slide it off now that one's kind of a pointless decal because that white on the silver pretty much invisible <clears throat> but it's there so make sure it lines up then using a cotton swab or q-tip press out any excess moisture any potential air bubbles these smaller ones don't tend to get that problem but so there it is so now i have to just let it dry and i can move on <coughs> to the next decal which is number two which goes right up here so let's see number two Is 
same thing. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. Set that down. See if that one's loose yet. Yep. All right. Microset. Decal. Tip. So the micro set helps it stick better and it also allows for easier placement and adjustment like that. Then the same thing. Just like that. Okay, so you get the idea. <clears throat> so the rest of these stencils on this side, the small ones, unless I run across something that needs to be talked about, I'll uh, I'll do this off camera. Okay, real quick, like I decided before I got too far, I would take the uh, um, masks off the cockpit, and right here you can see how well that masking. That liquid mask works because it peels off in a nice large clump. Just like that. So anyway, thought I'd show that real quick. So back to the decals. Okay, so I've got this entire side done. So now I'm going to flip it around and do the right side. So same thing. So I'm not going to uh, show you step by step. But as an aside, these decals seem to be working really well. Except for i got a wrinkle on that one right there that I didn't see earlier. So... Put some microsol on that see if it'll snuggle it down yep it worked I like those decals. All right, so I'll go ahead and get cracking on this other side here. <clears throat> all right, with all the stencils done, next thing I want to do real quick, like, is the prop decals. And what I've done is I've stuck some tape sticky side up and then taped the ends down so I can put the prop here to hold it in place while I position decals so procedure is the same cut the decals off soak them and apply them so I'm not gonna video that I'll just show you when it's done all right so there's the prop so I need to set that aside and let it dry but I'm really stoked with how it turned out those decals are so thin they really work good. All right, so the next thing I need to move on to is the National Insignia. So here's something that, uh, at least on this set, I've never really noticed before, but 
they give these white backers to fit underneath these. So apparently that is for apply white insignia background before applying insignias. And I guess what that's going to do, especially in a case like this where there is a, a contrast in dark and light, um, it allows the actual decal to stay opaque. So you're putting this down first to create a layer, then this on top to ensure that these colors don't kind of shadow through, if that makes sense because these are really ultra thin decals and I'm thinking that they would show through if you didn't do that. So anyway, I'll get these applied and then come back and show you what they look like. <clears throat> okay, here's why they give these backers because as you can see, you can see the ghost of this darker color, this black underneath. And if you didn't have this backer, then that would show through on the actual insignia itself. So that's kind of cool. <clears throat> Tip of the day. Um, when you're doing decals like this, especially larger ones, this is what I do. Works for me. Um, I put my layer of micro set on there, lay my decal down, and some of that decal set might have evaporated by the time I get this where I want it. And if it won't slide easily into position, just put some more on your brush, stick it along the edge of your decal and kind of push. And especially on a deal like decal like this, you can see it start to bubble up a little bit or lift off of the surface from the, the fluid getting in between the decal. That'll allow you to reposition it safely without tearing it. So that's what I do. Just a little tip. That's free. <clears throat> so while I'm letting this uh, next decal soak or get loose from the backing, something else, especially for beginning modelers, um, as a tip, when applying your decals, use the panel lines and features on the aircraft as your guide to where to put the, the decal. It'll help a lot in helping to center it up and um, get them lined up properly. So in this case right here, using this panel line here or here, you can see it a little bit better. That's where the end of the, the bar goes. And then it drops down just a little bit from this panel line here. Now what I like to do, and most people can eyeball it and I can, I have a pretty good eye for evening leveling stuff up but use um, a scale of some kind and in my case uh, three millimeters from this panel line to the top of the marking is what I used I do the same thing with doing the wing tip or the wing markings you know just use the features, the details, panel lines of the aircraft to help you level stuff out. So just a little tip there. Another free one. And here's something else I do. Using my brush, I'll start at the center. Pardon the shakes. I just had a cup of coffee and I haven't had coffee in forever. And I gently push the excess fluid out from underneath. Let the brush kind of pick it up. Run my brush on a paper towel to get the excess out. And then once most of it's out, it makes it a little bit easier and a little more, more less chance of uh, that over a little bit so here's another trick same thing stick it under the edge and that 
decal set will go underneath and allow you to move it or refloat the decal, so to speak. So I need to move that over a little bit. I was looking at the wrong illustration. And uh, this needs to be a little bit more centered between these two panel lines here according to the illustration. And I also have to allow for the extra size of the actual colored part of the decal. So move it over ever so gently. a little better and then this one's nice because this lines up with that panel line right there all right and then do the same thing push the excess decal set out Like that. And then uh, use a fresh cotton swabby. And make sure it's flattened out really good and there's no bubbles. The nice thing about this method with the, the backer like this is you can really see if there's any bubbles. So it's kind of nice. Just make sure it's all pushed down. Don't rub it because you could potentially slide the decal. And then kind of soak up the stuff off the edge as much as you can. Like that. Good to go. So now I need to do the other side. Okay, right here I've got some detail that's causing this to buckle up. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to push on it with my Q-tip. It's not really going to mash that down. So I'm going to have to use some Microsol here to hopefully get it to settle in. So I'm just putting somewhere I need it and that's it for now. I might as well put it up where the panel lines are and see if I can get it to settle in. And once you put this stuff on there, leave it. Don't touch it. Let it do its thing. We'll see if it works. All right, while those decals are all curing up really well before I try and put these on, um, I'm going to tackle the aircraft-specific decals. And actually, you know what? I need to do the drop tanks. So I think I'll do those first. So let me get the old few salage out of the way and work on those. Now for that, for some reason, they don't really have, other than this number 72 on the front of the fuel tanks, they don't uh, give the specifics of the rest of the decal. So that's where it's necessary to rely on the kit decal instructions. So what I need to do and to ensure that I match them up correctly, I get my aftermarket decals, the kit decals, and see what goes where. So we have 50 and 51 are the ones that are called out. No, yeah, 50, 51, and 52. 52 are these rings, these red rings. And those are not supplied on 
the kit decals or the uh, aftermarket decals. There are some yellow rings, but I'm not sure if those are the ones I'm supposed to use. So first we've got 1551, which are these here and these here. So the equivalents on here um, don't look anything like them. They're totally different. One of them says auxiliary fuel tank. So maybe that's a post-war deal. So I'm going to have to look online and look at some references, figure out what I should do. Okay, in looking at some photos, I mean, there's just all different kinds of configurations on markings. Um, one marking that seems to be lacking is there's usually a, a black placard that goes up here, and it's not on, I don't have it on the uh, aftermarket decals or the kit decals, so that one's out, unless I can find something in my spares. Uh, but then these here... Um, most of them seem to have a red placard or decal here and here. So I need to do that. I didn't see any with any rings around this, but almost all of them had this cap or whatever, filler cap or whatever it's supposed to be painted red. So that's what I'm going to do. I paint that red, use a red decal here, see if I can find a black placard, and then put the number 72 decals on the front as indicated by the aftermarket instructions. All right, so I'll be back. All right, here is a quick lesson, and this is why you always keep your spare decals from other kits. In this case, boom, right there, the black placard and a white decal, which red I think would have been better, but I'll use white because it showed it on some. So that will take care of the decals that go here. And then I can use these on the filler cap or whatever you want to call it. These two spares here. So boom, that is awesome. So always keep your old decals because they will come in handy. All right, so here are the drop tanks. I've already got one decaled up and I'll show you real quick like um, how I mounted these on this mat to make them easier to put the decals without them rolling around. Boom, blue tack. Works like a champ. I can get the angle I want, which is perfect like this. And voila. No moving around. So, using some of the decals that I <coughs> got from the other decal sheet. And then my aftermarket decal sheet. Um, I'll get this other one set up. Okay, so I've put some... Um, Solvent, let me actually use in solvent set because these white background parts here are weirdly bubbled. So I'm just going for the big guns right out of the gate. Let's see how that works. And while those are drying, I'm going to get the landing gear assembled <clears throat> so I need the parts get my decal stuff out of the way here get the zoomy <clears throat> so you can see what's going on and get the parts ready whoops
first I need to get the masking tape off of here. Like that. And like that. Also need to touch up the ends of those hubs there. Mm, those are the inside, so those might be okay. Actually, those are the. Those are going to be visible, so I need to touch them up. So just using some silver. Just do that right there. I'll let that dry for a few minutes. And to glue this stuff together, I'm going to use this glue here. Just put a little bit inside of the hub. Some in the where the axle goes through and it goes like that. And like that. So I'll do that to the other one and then I can attach the landing gear doors. <clears throat> now these fit together pretty easily because this little fork section here fits around those two indentations and this little pin goes into that hole right there just like <laughs> like that so I'm gonna hold that in place right there and using some to me an extra thin quick setting touch a little bit there and on the other side let that set up for a few seconds then carefully In there and let it dry because I'm not going to install those until here in a little bit. Okay, so what I'm doing here is this looked like that kind of crackly looking weird. I, I don't know what's going on there, but it's not too hard to fix. I'm just taking my 800 grit sanding stick here and just using the corners as you can see by evidence right there and by carefully staying on the decal and not hitting the paint I'm just sanding all that rough stuff down making making it smooth so when I put the other decals on hopefully it will be nice and flat so I'm gonna do the same thing here you can see crackly appearance oops taking some off right there so I'll have to be careful and I'm just gonna sand it as smooth as I can without tearing too much oh man it's gonna tear that one up man. I'll just get it as smooth as I can before I put the other ones on there And this is a new development. I've never had a decal do this. Get wrinkly like that and stay. So we're learning together today, folks. Free school. <clears throat> that feels pretty smooth. Okay, so 
Now I can put those on. But in the meantime, I'm gonna have to do the same thing to these here because these did the weird wrinkly thing as well. All right, the decals are done. And uh, I must say I had a little bit, well, not a little bit. I had quite a bit of trouble with the larger decals, the, the, the insignia, the national insignia. They did some really weird things. Now, at first I thought it was, you know, maybe because they're larger, because all of the smaller decals like these, all these here work like a champ, no problem. But this one here is a large decal. It's got decal film um, in the center of this C here. And those went down totally smooth, no problems. Only these here. And um, I just, I don't know, I don't know why. So uh, they're gonna, not going to look that great, but it happens. So what I'm going to do here is run my knife in the panel lines. <clears throat> and uh, put some... put some decal solvent on there and try and get them to snuggle down in there good. And then once that's dry, I can put a clear coat. And that will be it for that part so just carefully scribing those lines with a sharp knife they look pretty pretty horrible these decals but They didn't stick or something. It's kind of weird. But uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm just gonna go for the go for the big guns here and use my solve set. And I've decided that in addition to this, I am also going to. I wasn't gonna do any weathering, but since the decals look pretty shoddy, I am might help cover some of that up but not very much because I discovered that just gentle rubbing on these black stripes they wear away rather nicely to match the photos of the actual aircraft ie on the front here looks pretty good so that is what I'm gonna do but first, I need to get these decals finished up. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Once I do that and I put the clear coat on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that little bit of uh, wear on the black paint first once I do that then I'll do a clear coat so let me put my last last bit of solve set on here and then I'll come back and show how that show you how the uh,
weathering will work. On the black parts. Okay, the last thing I need to do before I do my clear coat um, is doing a little bit of kind of chipping paint rubbing around the around the uh, machine gun access doors here where they load the ammunition and stuff and it's really simple how I'm doing this this paint is quite fragile as I've discovered and so I'm just getting a damp q-tip cotton swab cotton bud thing getting some moisture on there and then just using this toothpick slash cocktail stick and just carefully scratching the paint and it's it's scratching that but not harming the silver underneath because the silver is way tougher than this black stuff is so I'm just scratching it like that now something else that I can do and I'm going to try it I may regret it but I'm going to try it anyway because I'm feeling kind of experimental I'm doing it on each side like this because I don't want it to look like you know it's all evenly rubbed or whatever so doing that and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to rub some more of this off right here like it's been scuffed and worn away from foot traffic. Okay, because this is where there would be scuffing and stuff going on from the crew doing their ammo loading and such. Wouldn't be so much out here. So there's no reason to go walking out there. But just like this. And then if I want to alter it even more, I can use this here pointing one to get some more concentrated rubbing like this. Okay, so just a bit of that, and uh, once this water dries, I'll be able to shoot the clear coat on. <clears throat> okay, so I've got done what I want to do. So now, I can spray the clear on, and once that dries, then I can start doing some panel line washes and stuff like that. So for my um, clear coat, I am using Model Master Acryl semi-gloss clear which is no longer a thing in the rest of the world it's been discontinued and fortunately i was able to snatch up a few bottles of uh i was able to get this a bottle of flat and a bottle of clear gloss once those are gone that's it i'll have to find something else but this works pretty good and for this, I'm going to be my using my dedicated clear paint or clear uh, um, clear coat airbrush, and that is this Sparmax, whatever it's called. I can't remember what it's called, but it works really good. It's basically it's a single action. Uh, I think it's a three. 0.3 millimeter um, tip and needle and it does the job really well for clears and I don't have to wrap contamination or any of that kind of stuff so I'll spray that on and then come back okay so there it is um, I got the semi gloss coat on there so now I need to let it cure up really well and after I do that then I can start with uh, some panel line washes and stuff like that. 
So, I'm not sure how long this video is, but uh, I think I'm going to end it right here. So that ends part six of the Tamiya 148 scale F51D Mustang being built as a P51D Mustang in the Pacific. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed and you'd like to see more of this build and maybe some others that I've done in the past or ones that I'll be doing in the future, hit the subscribe button. Um, that's it. So next time when I come back, we'll be doing some, uh, some weathering and maybe get this thing finished up. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all later.